Hey there, I am Stephanie and today I'm going to show you my art studio. I'm a traditional artist and I work in a great variety of mediums, so I have consequently quite a lot of art supplies. I'm going to show you all the art supplies that I use on a daily basis, dive a little bit into why I use those, why I like them, show you my space, what inspires me and my tools. I cleaned my studio up so it's not too messy, but it's not pristine because I'm working on a bunch of sculptures and so I mean they're on my desk I'm not going to get rid of them I also started an oil paint not so long ago because I thought why not learn to work with water soluble oils because I have so much time on my hands let's just start and I'll show you <laughs> So this is the oil painting I've been working on. I started using water-soluble oil paint. I actually started with oil paint when I was a teenager. I made the first layer, I think, almost three weeks ago, so now I can safely start the second layer. I'm really not used to working with oils, so I find it rather difficult. So the paint I am using is water-soluble oil. I don't really have a lot of experience with them, but I read about them a few years ago and I really wanted to try them. I did some minor oil painting when I was a teenager, but what really bugged me was the highly toxic solvent that I never really liked. So when I saw these a few years ago, I wanted to really try them and last summer I got them for my birthday. I didn't really have a chance until now to try them out. And I'm not sure yet if I'm going to paint much, but I've really wanted to try. I just basically took all my basic colors I tend to always buy the same pigments because I know with set pigments I can get pretty much all the colors that I'd like. Here I store all my acrylics, so I've got a few. I have some that I've got when I was a teenager, so a long time ago, 20 years or so ago. They're still good actually, so yeah, still liquid. Most paints actually have a very long life shelf and I don't really use them all that much. Here are like things that I might need if I want to cover big surfaces or if I do studies or for the mural painting for instance. And most acrylics I use are actually here and see it's color coded. <laughs> so basically I have all the blues in there and these are the brands that I like. So I like Schmincke which is a German brand. The other brand I quite like is Sennelier. Sennelier is a French brand. At some point I just tried a bunch of different acrylics and then I settled on certain and I also have golden. So I forgot to say that before in the video but basically what I do is always to take the same pigment no matter what medium I use and so I have settled on these specific pigments. It's not the ones that you should take, it's just the one that I like. Basically the idea is to have two types of reds, one warm and one cold one, uh, because with the cold red you're going to be able to mix purples. So I like to use Kinacridone Magenta, which is PR122 for the cold red, and Cadmium Red Light, which is PR108. Then of course I have a neutral yellow, I again like to use cadmiums and I use PY35. In the blue department it's like the red, so you want one warm blue and one coldish blue and for the cold one I'm using ultramarine blue which is PB29. And then the color I really like is uh, cobalt turquoise. PG50. Then in terms of greens, I tend to mix my own greens, but I do like to have some phthalo green as a base, which gives you very vibrant greens. And then to mute it a little bit down, I like chromium oxide green, PG17. And phthalo green is PG7. And the last one is a dull red. Here I am using PR206, but the other option would be PR179. So here I have a bunch of books that are art related. So art books to learn, 
This clearly is my current favorite book. I made a whole video about it. Yeah, that's how much I like it. And here all my natural history books. I really love these. I use them all the time. I use them for reference. I read them. They are full shock of information, inspiration. I could not really work without these. So this is by far my favorite shelf in terms of books in my art studio. So here I keep some of my art supplies. I have some pastels here that I used to use a lot when I was working in miniatures. Here I have a bunch of acrylic markers. I use them to decorate my custom packaging boxes when I package sculptures. If you're interested in seeing how I make those packaging, I actually made a video not so long ago. I'm going to link it up. Here I have all my colored pencils. And here I keep all my watercolor tubes. Here is the gouache tubes and here are the watercolor tubes. For the gouache, I have two brands. I have Schmincke Overdam and Winston Newton. So if I had to do it again, I would not buy the Winston Newton. I actually bought gouache for the first time when I was in London in residency beginning of this year. And I really wanted to try gouache because I saw a great exhibition about botanical illustration. I wanted to try gouache. And yeah, I took that one. I did some online research and this brand kept popping up, but I don't really like them. And then I bought the Horadam gouache, which I use very sparingly. I think I'm just not used to the mattes. Then here on the watercolor side, I tried a bunch of different brands brands. Most recently the M. Graham, which honestly I'm in love with that brand. Too bad it's done in the US. So it's a bit of an import here. I don't have any tubes of Schminke because I have half pans, which I'm going to show you later. What I do is when I can, I buy when I travel and I buy the brand from where I am. So I live in France and Sennelier, for instance, well, if you live in the US, it's going to be hell of expensive. If you live in France, it's actually one of the most affordable one in the extra fine ones. So it's actually a good brand to buy if you're in France. When you travel and you know you travel to a country that has a good brand of any kind of art supplies, it's a good way to get it cheaper than to buy it in your country. I'm not sure it makes sense, but yeah. The brands I currently have is so Schminke, but in half pan. I really like M. Graham. I just bought these five colors, which I thought looked nice. I have some Isaro paint, which is a small handmade watercolor in, from Belgium, which is really good. I have some Daniel Smith. Honestly, I don't like them. I think they're pretty overhyped, to be honest. I don't think the quality is that much better. I mean, they're pretty good, but compared to the others, I find that Sennelier, Winston Newton and Schmincke re-wet much more easily. Uh, M. Graham is just like butter, so <laughs> probably my favorite. So these are my watercolor supplies. I'm using the ceramic palettes. They are actually plates, food plates for fondue. Uh, which I found, I thrifted them for really cheap. If you're looking for good palettes, take ceramic palettes, white ones. Simply take white plates. You can also take smaller plates or just be creative with what you see when you go into charity shops. In terms of watercolors, I am using a variety of brands. So what I did is these are Schminke for most, but not all. And what I did is I asked, but not for the 24 pan set, but the 12 pan set. So I could then add the ones I really wanted. I also have this Fintech Colero. They're made in, handmade in Germany. And I really like them. They're really good. I actually use them mostly in sculptures, but yeah. Then I have some ink. This is the ink that I use most. It's from Röhre und Klingner. It's also a German brand. And this one is without plastic. So it's waterproof, but not acryl based, but with shellac. I've been using it for years and I still have about this left. Whereas when you use a pen like this, you have to throw them away so often because there's so little ink in there and this is so much more efficient. I've stopped buying them. So now what I do is I just use these until they're done, until they're finished. I'm probably going to do an artwork about those. And then I just want to replace everything from drawing. 
uh, with dip pen and ink and maybe I want to try fountain pen and ink but I'm not sure this is the best ink for that or maybe road ring. I have some road ring left but I need to clean them so so far I haven't tried them. If you're watching this don't buy that crap, don't buy that plastic crap, rather buy some good quality ink take a dip pen and you're good to go. You don't really need anything else. And if you travel a lot, then find a good fountain pen. And now in fountain pens, you don't need to have cartridges. There's something called a converter and you simply can use that to use normal ink and put it in your fountain pen ink. And this is going to dramatically, drastically reduce your plastic waste. And in terms of paper, what I use most is this brand, so it's a French brand again. So what's really important is that the 100% cotton, I'm very adamant about that. I personally prefer when the texture is smooth, so I'm more into hot pressed. And this is actually between hot pressed and cold pressed. So it has a bit of tooth, but not much. And honestly, it's my favorite paper. So it's the one I use the most. I have some Arch as well, so this is cold pressed. I mean, it's very high quality, not my favorite though. And then I also tried Fabriano, also 100% cotton again. I cannot say it's not good, but I tend to go back to this one again and again. I would say try to find what is most local to you and try that. Because then it doesn't have to travel that far to get to you. It's going to be cheaper as well. I also recently got this, but I cannot say that I'm really happy about it. I bought these for the gouache. I found it impractical to have gouache on the palette. And I found this one, which is metallic, but it's beading quite a bit. So I'm probably just going to use it to put my colors in when I need them and use ceramic palettes because that palette is just, I need to maybe uh, use some sandpaper on it to just roughen it up so it doesn't beat as much but right now it's not usable in my personal opinion. So here I have all my wire mesh. This is super useful in sculpting. If you have fine details you can cover it in clay and you know it's still structural so very useful. And just here I have some tiles. Those are pretty big tiles, so the working tiles. I got these from my boyfriend. He's an architect and he had some tile samples that he brought home that they don't, they didn't need. So I have a few and I have been using them a lot as much for work, for working directly on it. When I was working with polymer clay, I would use this and then put everything directly in the oven. They are also great to use as palette to mix your colors and use it. Just ceramic tiles are probably the thing I use the most in my art studio, regardless of what materials I use. Here I have random art supplies that I use quite a lot. So I have some gesso. I kind of need to buy new ones. I have some gloves, some nitrile gloves that I use with epoxy clay. I have some soft gel mats uh, medium, which is really great to work in sculpting. And here I have all my varnishes. I recently tried the varnish from Lascaux and they're really good. Not on polymer clay, mind you, but in general. On polymer clay, I still have this one if I want a glossy finish and this if I want a matte finish. So here are all the clays I use. I used to work primarily with polymer clay, so that's why I have so much here. I hardly use polymer clay nowadays. Here is my most recent uh, addition, so to speak. So these are air dry clay. I really like these. The one I like most is uh, Premier, Pre Premier, Premier from La Dole, Activa La Dole. And it's the one I used for most of my stuff. So I keep them in airtight containers and I spray them with water when I use them. Um, I really like this one. I also have creative paper clay. Honestly, I don't like it as much. I'm still going to use it, I hope. I find it too fibrous. I have some super sculpty. I don't use polymer clay all that much nowadays because I really like to paint my clay and painting your clay is always a bit of a mess. It always stays sticky even. There's always some stickiness to it, which I really don't like, which I don't have as a problem with epoxy clay or air dry clay. But Super Sculpey is sticky uh, and so it's really nice to work on the wire. So that's why I have it and I bought it in London and quite liked it. 
So yeah, I'm probably going to use it until the end, that one. It's fairly new. I bought it this year in London, so it has just a few months. The epoxy clay I use is epoxy sculpt, the natural one. I quite like it because it's sticky and it's a bit of a mixture between a glue and a modeling clay. So I use that quite a bit, but it's super toxic. I've been really trying to replace it lately with the air dry clay. Again, I'm still using polymer clay, but not as much. I use epoxy clay and air dry clay in my sculptures. So yeah, that's pretty much the clay I use. I like to use quite a lot of wire in my work. I use structural wire as base for amateurs, but also colored wire to add the details and to make something that is really sturdy. So wire, I have a huge wire collection. This is only part of it. I actually have another drawer full of wires. So yeah, that's something that I use a lot and that I find very helpful. I don't think you can really do a good sculpture without an armature and so wire is probably like the thing you need the most. Of course you just need that kind of wire to make armatures or if you want to do something really big, something heavy like that. But I find using colored wire really opens a lot of possibilities when working with sculpture and especially uh, in my style. So this is my little sculpting tools and brushes van. That tiny van that I really liked is made by a German brand called Werkhaus. It's extremely ethical, it's recycled, it's super cute. I love them so much. The first compartment here, which is in the front for you, are the brushes that I use to paint my sculptures. Painting sculptures is pretty rough on brushes, so you don't want to use your best brushes as you're going to trash them. In the compartment here, I have all the brushes that I use for varnishing, but also for glue. And this is the tools I use the most, so nothing very new here. I made a video about the tools I use, which I'm going to put up here. Basically, I have ball ender tools, silicone tools, needle tools, exacto knife, and my trusted and beloved tiny spatula tools. And this is my tiny car, also from Workhouse, which is watercolor and more illustration. So here are my watercolor brushes. Here I have all my dip pens and some of those pens that I'm finishing. Then here I have all my graphite pencils. Here I have some quite old watercolor soluble colored pencil, also Faber-Castell, but this is like the old branding. I won these as a teenager and yeah, I don't use them all that much, but I still use them. As you can see, they are getting smaller. I also have a metal ruler always handy. So in terms of working tables, I have three that I use personally. So there are four tables. So these two are IKEA tables that you can manually pull up and down. This is the table where my boyfriend is and I tend to work on the computer on that white table. And then I have two tables. My boyfriend actually made these. So we just bought the tabletops, which is wood and then he added the legs, he reinforced it. These two tables are really used for my sculptural work while this one I mostly use for watercolors and if I want to work on acrylic paints or oil I will use my easel. I usually work on videos on this table and this is my setup so I put my computer on top of this uh, for different reasons. For one I often have something to drink and so that way it's safe from whatever water or drink I have. The second reason is it gets really hot in my studio in summer and so this helps to ventilate better the beast, especially when working on videos. It does tend to heat up. I have a digital tablet. This is fairly new from XP Pen. I have been wanting to play around with handwritings in my video editing and that's why I got this one. When I edit my video, I always work from an external hard drive, that way I don't damage this thing. This is a very new computer, I bought it this year, it's a MacBook Pro. It was indecently expensive, but I'm very happy about it. It's not the most powerful one. Rather than a laptop, you might want to have a desk computer to have for heavy editing. But I had planned to go on art residency on the regular and I hope that I can do that in the future. I, I'm not really sure what's going to happen with the world. The other thing is I've been having a desk computer for 
10 years now. And I always missed being able to easily move my computer because my studio is pretty big and I like to watch shows, uh, documentaries, listen to music or simply use pictures as references. And so being able to move my computer around the studio has been a life changer. So I'm extremely happy I've had it now for a few months. And I, I regret nothing. I'm really happy. It's also really small, so I can just clap it and put it in a drawer if I don't want to be on it. And then I have the whole table to work on something else. For video editing, I use Adobe Premiere Pro, mainly because I have the suit. Now that I have a new computer, I could finally subscribe to the Adobe suit. Yeah, so I use Photoshop, Lightroom, Classic on the regular, obviously Adobe Premiere Pro, and also InDesign. I have this microphone here when I do voiceovers, blue snowball eyes, and I have this sock on top just to dampen a bit the air when I talk onto it. It's not perfect, but it's a cheap alternative. <laughs> So the other microphone I have is this one. So you have this fuzzy thing and this is basically the microphone. I didn't really talk about what I have on the walls yet. So basically what I have is mostly my own work. I tend to prefer having my own work on to my walls simply because it helps me to stay coherent and consistent in my own work. And I also don't get falsely inspired or too distracted by other styles. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you liked this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, maybe subscribe, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!